Ready. The new marketing show is brought to you by Trinity Web Media. Trinity Web Media solves business problems through effective digital marketing. TrinityWebMedia.com. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the new marketing show brought to you by Trinity Web Media. Today, I'm joined by my co-host, Kevin Everly, and our social media content diva, Tammy Harvey. Hey, Kevin, how are you today? Good, Greg. How you doing? Fantastic. Fantastic. I'm, uh, I'm doing okay. Tammy, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for joining us. So, <clears throat> Kevin, how's the weather over there in New Jersey? You know, it's actually 50 something degrees. I'm okay with it today. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. It's, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's always sunny in San Diego. That should be a slow, <laughs> that, should be, that should be a TV show, right? Uh, or is that taken? Yeah. <laughs> so today I thought that we would talk about, you know, again, staying on the focus of problem solving and solving business challenges. Let's talk about the role of social media when it comes to that. Who better to have on this call than Tammy Harvey? You know, Tammy is Trinity Web Media's social media coordinator. You know, she's an expert in the ability of social media, and I'm excited to hear what Tammy has to say about it. What are some of the ways that you feel businesses today solve business problems using social media? One of the biggest things that we're doing for social media is, is active listening. So that's, you know, always being on track with what's going on for the accounts that you're managing. So that means like turning on your notifications, knowing when people are responding to whatever posts you have or any type of interaction. Um, what are some of the tool, you know, what are some of the ways that you set those alerts to be able to actively listen effectively? Um, so I've been using TweetDeck. There's also Facebook pages. There's a lot of different programs. I also use Mav Social, which sends me updates whenever there's any type of interaction with my clients. Fantastic. Active listening. What? So active listening, it, it basically means what? It, it, Kevin, what does that basically mean to you? Does it mean listening, like active listening, like listening to what clients are saying about your brand or about your product or about their experience or about their challenges as it relates to you or as it relates to your brand? Or that's kind of how I hear it. That's kind of how it, in my mind it works. But I mean, I agree with um, the only thing I would say in addition is the ability to actively listen and turn that into an opportunity to discuss what that audience is looking to hear. I totally agree. So, so Tammy, um, Google alerts, have you ever used Google alerts for this kind of thing? Or are you looking more in, you know, real time on those social media networks? Um, I, I prefer to do it in real time because then you're able to really, you know, service your customer, the brand, or, you know, whatever you're managing, I think you're able to do, you're able to be more efficient if it's in real time, because it's, I mean, I think that's what active listening is, right? Sure. All right. So active listening. I totally agree with that. I think that if you're not listening, you're missing out, you know, part of social is, you know, part of communication is right, is sending out a message. The other half of communication is listening. You know, when, when you're able to have that give and take, I think that you're able to probably clue into some insights how uh, it, it, into your client's world, whether or not they're having, mm -hmm. you know, a good experience with your brand or other brands too. Like you can active listening, you can active listen <clears throat> to a hashtag also and, and get a topic. You know, I think that that's, that's important also just to, you know, clue, especially on Twitter, when Twitter, Twitter is really conversational, right? So if you're keying into a hashtag with people discussing a topic, that's active listening when then you could go ahead and not sell because social isn't selling, right? We, we've established that. You can go in there and try to help in the best, in the, in the best way possible. You would agree, Tam, or? Absolutely. And I think that by doing active listening that you're going to be able to solve your, your clients or your brand's problems faster than any other approach. So how many times have you seen this where, you know, a new brand takes the initiative to run to social, uh, you know, real hot and heavy for a couple of weeks. And then it kind of peters out on like an initiative level. You know, I always feel like, you know, I see that commonly. And I think a big part of that is 
it's not the give and a take that Greg was talking about. It's more putting the brand message out there and not understanding that social media is a two way street. Yeah. You, you know, I, I think that that goes a lot back to like, well, what we were talking about last week, you know, in the in sure. episode previous week, you know, like amplify, clarify, and don't intrude. I think that that plays perfectly into social where <clears throat> if your message isn't broadcast and amplified, and if it isn't clear, you have no chance of being in that conversation at all. I mean, uh, that's the way I think of it, uh, Tam. I mean, I definitely agree because you don't want to be intrusive for something that really doesn't pertain to what you're doing. Right. And I mean, I think just as bad as being, you know, maybe not as bad as being intrusive, but I feel like the, uh, you know, just pushing that one message and not trying to interact and create that engagement with the audience is a lot of, you know, a lot of what complicates social media for first timers and people trying to run their own, you know, start their social media off strong with that engagement. Yeah, I I totally agree. I think that you know, active listening is just a part of the puzzle, though. <clears throat> if you don't, you know, the other business challenges that you can have when it comes to social could be things like uh, growing your audience mm-hmm. and also growing, stimulating engagement. So, you know, Kevin, what do you think about uh, how do you think, you know, the, the, the growing the audience, right, getting more followers or whatever? Although, you know, the follower thing, let me just say this. I'm going to throw this out there. And I'm going to tie it in together so it's not going to be a real Greg long rant about things that doesn't make any fucking sense. It's going to be the – listen, <clears throat> I think that to, the, to a point, once you hit X amount of followers for whatever channel you're trying to work with, I think that anything over that is a vanity metric where they feel great about – got to look at these look at these people. They know what they're doing. They got 2,000 new followers in a week. They got 2,000 new followers and they grew it to this. I don't care how many of those accounts are active and engaging. So I think that followers are important yeah. because nobody wants to shout their message in an empty room, right? We need somebody listening, right? <clears throat> so the thing is, is that I, th- I think that to a point you need, you do need followers, but what's more important? And, and I'll ask Tammy this in a moment. What's more important followers or engagement? What do you think, Tam? I think that engagement is obviously more important because those are the people who are checking for your brand and who are actively listening to the message that you're delivering. Um, Followers, people can purchase followers. So again, like you said, it's a vanity metrics. It's not really your target or, or your target audience because they're not, you know, interacting with what you are doing with social. So Tam, how do you measure engagement? I mean, I, I'm sure I'm sure it varies by network, but let's take Facebook for example. How are you measuring uh, Facebook engagement? Um, I I measure my engagement by the number of likes, the number of comments that I'm having, um, the different people who are genuinely interacting for us. Okay. Interacting with us. Oh, the ratio to follow. So let's say, for example, easy numbers. We have you know okay. a thousand followers, but we're only getting you know, 20 likes, that's only like 2% engagement. Or even if we're getting 200 likes, that's only a 20% engagement. So there's 80% of our followers who aren't really paying attention to what we're doing. We're only getting a certain percentage of that interaction. So I think real success is based upon, you know, who's liking your stuff, who's interacting with your, your posts or whatever you have going on for social. And I think that's really where, where the success is. So, so I guess if I had to ask a question when it comes to the, the ratio of, 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 I guess, engagement, likes and comments to followers, there, there's, that, there's that number in there, that percentage number. <clears throat> do you, how do I say this? So do you feel that 20% or 2% engagement is 2% engagement, whether or not you have 1,000 followers, which are 2% would then be whatever that number is, or 2% of 200, which would be 2 like, do you feel that it's the same or is there a number that you want to hit like a critical mass in order to tip to, you know, start following, you know, and, and to start increasing things? Let me actually, let me start with you, Kev. What do you think about that? So, you know, before, so I absolutely think there is 
The only thing I wanted to, you know, kind of clarify for the audience is, do we feel, you know, before I answer that, I feel like it would be fair to clarify, you know, between likes, comments, and shares, you know, using Facebook again as an example, are any of those weighted differently? I think that engagement is is engagement. Like any engagement is good engagement. Okay. And comments and in that, that interaction, I think, is a lot more valuable than, you know, the vanity metrics of just who, who your followers are. Okay. No, but no, I guess my question was more between like the act of a like, a share and a comment. Is there anything like, you know, you know, a comment might be one point, a like might be one point is a share five points, you know, when it, are those actions weighted differently amongst themselves? Um, I think that real engagement, like honest, real engagement where people are, people are interacting with the brand, like on a genuine level and it's not automated through a computer system where it's like, you know, they follow a hashtag and then they're going to put like, you know, a yeah, heart or whatever. It's, it's not true engagement because it's, it's automated. And I think that if you have, you know, real people who are actually following the brand and actually interacting genuinely, that that is a type of interaction that's way more important than any other type of interaction, I guess. Kim, how, how, what, what uh, role do you think hashtags play in the growth of, you know, a network on social media? And you could use a specific uh, platform for an example. I think that hashtags are, are great to a certain point because I think that you're going to attract a different type of audience just depending on what you're hashtagging it, um, what you're hashtagging. Um, even, for example, for Trinity, you know, I right now I'm using a 10-10-10 um, hashtag strategy. So cool. basically what that is is it's 10 at a smaller level. So let's say from like, you know, 10,000 to, you know, 500,000, you know, we're going to do 10 hashtags of that. And then it kind of keeps building so that you're, you're getting different audience views. So based off the volume, the hashtags used. Yes. Okay. So, so there's a method to the madness. People just think like they, they throw out hashtags and you throw out, and you know what? I'll be honest. Like there's a marketing press TV video shot maybe four years ago, me ranting about how much I hate hashtags. Remember that video? I, I, so I had I this whole thing about how I, I hated hashtags because I think it, you know, blah, 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 blah. But now I, I will admit this dog, this old dog has learned new tricks. Tammy has helped <laughs> me see the light when it comes to growth and when it comes to, you know, hashtags. Now, do you think, but hold on, before you jump on, when you made that video four years ago, that was super relevant because hashtags became yeah. Almost a, uh, you know, like a fad, yeah. hashtag this or hashtag I'm done. Or, you know, yeah. it, wasn't, it wasn't to store information the way that we're using it today. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, but now I've warmed up to it because it's, in, yeah. it's, it's taken our, it's allowed our content to go to the next level and go into people who maybe never would have heard of us, right? I mean, I think that that's super important, you know, I agree. for growth. I agree. So do you see the same thing, Tam, when you... When you go ahead and you, you know, deploy your 10, 10, 10 hashtag strategy. I absolutely think that, um, it's been helpful with the, with the brands that we're, we're taking care of, even with Trinity, because like, like you said, we are getting different interaction from people that maybe would have never known that what we're doing as a brand or what we represent as a brand. So Tammy, and when you're talking 10, 10, 10 strategy, is that for Instagram or Facebook, Twitter, you know, where are you using that strategy? I think it's all across the board. I usually use the hashtags. I think it's more relevant on Instagram and also Twitter as opposed to Facebook. Uh, just because I feel like on Facebook, it's, you know, like your message is going to get delivered without necessarily having all of those hashtags. Not to mention that, you know, the, the Facebook algorithm just changed to where you're seeing more social from friends and family and less from brands. So <clears throat> essentially brand pages are going away. You know, nobody, you know, I've said this, I've talked to Jay Bear about this a whole bunch and other smart people, smarter than, way smarter than I, where it's, nobody goes to a Facebook brand page, hardly ever, unless you're looking for specific information about that brand. Everybody else consumes that content through the newsfeed. So, I mean, the Facebook hashtag strategy, I think that that is gone. I think that really the 10, the 10, 10, 10 hashtag strategy is going to stick 
and stay more with Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, and also and in Instagram. I think Instagram is is the big is the big one. So when we say ten ten ten, just to clarify, we're not using all thirty hashtags at the same time, or we are. What are we doing? You know, how does that- yeah, I use all thirty hashtags at the same time because I. Instagram, well, with Instagram, you're allowed 30 hashtags. And so I think that you're able to reach a broader audience if you're taking advantage of the full 30 30 hashtags. It's like, why wouldn't you? So let's break that into Twitter. You know, so how would you decide what hashtags you're using on Twitter and how many would you use in a tweet? Um, with Twitter, I think it's a little bit different because there is a lot more active listening going on. Like Greg said, it's, it's a lot more conversation based, you know? Um, so I, I wouldn't use a full 30 for Twitter. I would do the things that are most relevant. So for example, it just depends on where the audience is at. Uh, for example, you know, for Trinity, whatever our message is going to be or whoever we want to target our audience, that's the hashtag that I'm going to use. But I would only use two or three versus, you know, a full 30 just because there's also a limited number of characters that you could have onto Twitter. And I think your message is more important than the hashtag for Twitter. I don't remember who published the article, but I do remember reading an article around January or so that there was actually findings that companies using more than two hashtags on any Twitter post actually received less views because of the fact that, you know, you were taking up that message with the hashtag and not actually getting your point across. Yeah. And also that's pretty spammy if you think about it, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like my biggest reason I didn't like hashtags back then was because hashtags were originally developed for content curation, right? Mm-hmm. So I can go to Twitter and somebody can, you know, uh, use a hashtag and I'll uh, date myself how long I've been using Twitter. Steve Nash, right? <laughs> Steve Nash playing for the Suns. And, you know, what's going on Steve Nash, you know? Hashtag that. I get all of Steve Nash information. It's uh, A hashtag is, is its own content channel where what, what ends up happening is, you know, if you tie a hashtag into somebody's business challenge, right, guess what they're looking for? They're looking for that. It becomes its own search engine at that point when you're searching through mm-hmm. and you're curating your content through hashtags. So if you if, if they're used correctly, like and topically, I love them, right? But I, so many times I see people use the hashtag like "sorry not sorry" or "hung." You know, like real I'm a real bullshit hashtags that are not worth my goddamn time and not mean anything at all. So how do uh, let me ask Tammy this? How do you go about finding the best hashtags for the type of content? Because I got to imagine like the different types of content that we push out, whether it's images on Instagram or if it's dogs bark, I mean, or if it's um, memes or if it's written posts or this podcast, how do you go about figuring out what hashtags are going to pop the most? Well, I mean, I obviously am doing a research, um, on what, you know, you have to look at the numbers. I think the numbers of the hashtag, like what, where things are at also what's relevant to the brand. Obviously I'm not going to, you know, if we have a catering company, I'm not going to hashtag digital marketing or video, you know, I think it has to be relevant to the brand and, and what they're doing. I mean, I don't think there's any right, right or wrong answer, but I know that I switch up my hashtags, you know, every couple of weeks just to keep the the audience and the engagement fresh and new and so how does top does topical content come into play with that absolutely for those not listening topical content would be something that relates to something in the news today i think that you know everything has every you know if it's topical and it's relevant and it's recent i think that unless you want to go ahead and brave new ground i think the hashtags sort of reveal themselves Mm -hmm. you know like where Okay. You, you know, you know, I, I I didn't invent Netflix, but I have a show I want on Netflix type of type of analogy. You know, I didn't invent the web, but I want a website on the web. So it's like, you know, I think that it they reveal themselves of the broadcast channel. You know, and I, I think that you know what I I mean go back to like not to be cliche or quote our own shit, but like it all has to do with the review, refine, repeat thing because you know it. Tammy, how often do you go, or Kevin, like, either of you guys answer this question, how often do you guys actually go and switch up the hashtags because things are working well or not working? 
honestly, I switch up my hashtag strategy, you know, every few weeks, just because depending on what is relevant to the brand or, and like you said, the review, refine, repeat. Okay. So certain hashtags are working for your brand. You'll see that different followers or different audiences coming in through your channel. Um, but then there's a way to kind of tighten up the whole, the whole hashtag game, because if certain things aren't working, it's like, why would you not replace it and find something else that's going to be better suited for the brand to try to get that engagement, get that audience. That makes perfect sense. I mean, I don't really can't think of very much that's not cyclical. So, you know, the fact that, you know, to keep static hashtags in place, regardless of what's going on, you know, that, that doesn't make any sense. So you're absolutely- I mean, I think that if it doesn't make sense, stop doing it. Exactly. Right? I mean, like <clears throat> I'm stupid like that, I guess. Like I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I, I, I have common sense. So it's like, if, if, if mm-hmm. shit's not working, stop. You know, if I, that is if my only thing. I can apply that to my Head personal piece. life, right? You know? <laughs> I mean, like, seriously, if you think about things, it's like, why do I want to expend time? And time, you know, what? time is the only asset you can't recover, right? Why do you want to spend time? I don't even care about the money and the investment because that, you can recoup that. Why do you want to spend time going down the wrong path to do something that will mm-hmm. or will not work, you know? You know, we're not even that. We're, you know, adopting a strategy that, that that's just based off of, you know, two cents without ever, you know, looking at data to back it up. One of my biggest pet peeves in business is when you ask somebody, so why did you guys begin to do that? Or, you know, what, how did that process come about? Or, you know, where, where was the roots of that? And the answer is, well, we've always done it that way. To me, you know, that's not an answer. Yeah. And I, I also think that in talking about like the review, repine, re- review, refine, repeat, that that the results are really going to show themselves a lot quicker than anything else. I mean, it is almost com- almost kind of common sense. Like you're going to see what's working and what's not, you know, within the first few posts, you're going to see like what type of engagement you are. And there's even AB testing that you could do with whatever you're posting just to see what, even what set of hashtags or what type of images are working for your brand. And, and you know, along that, if, if you don't know, then you're not measuring the right things. Right, Kev? I mean, if you don't know that shit, I mean, that's like business marketing. That's like Trinity Web Media and Development Marketing 101. Like, if you don't know how things are performing, you are, are, you've are you already lost the race. Right, Kev? Correct. I mean, those, those numbers are the lifeblood of a campaign. If you don't understand or know those, you know, you're already not, you're already at a disadvantage. Your competition already has one up on you. I, I think that, the more in tune that you can be with your audience and what's going on and what they're saying, what their problems are. And that's all part of being in tune, right? <clears throat> Typically, if I'm really close with somebody, a family member or a friend or – I always – I'm in tune, right? You're in tune with what's going on. You're in tune with the good, the bad, what they're saying about shit, what, what their experiences are about some things and, and this or that. You know, I think that that you know, active listening and all part of that – is has something to do with that has also has it is just part of the whole relationship you, you know what i'm saying so that makes it it's called social media it makes perfect sense i mean it's a two two-way street you know every every you know the same exactly what you would the things you would do to be a good friend are exactly what will make you a great brand on social media oh absolutely and i think that you know with all the things that we're talking that all the things that we're talking about that really the act of listening comes into solving problems for our clients. Like we want to kind of, you know, get them the engagement or get them true, genuine engagement in the least amount of time, you know, because we're helping solve their businesses problems. If they, you know, want to, if it's a social issue or if it's, you know, whatever they got going on, it's like, that's our job is to solve problems. I totally agree. So I I guess, you know, to wrap things up here. So let's just take, what's one last thought you want? What what do we want to leave everybody with? Let me start and then we'll go to you, Kevin, then we'll go to you, Tam, and then we'll wrap it up. But I think that if anything, if anybody's going to take anything away about how social solves business problems here is, I think that social media allows you to be in tune 
to with your audience in a manner that other marketing strategies and tactics don't allow you. It's social. It's an interaction. You know, communication is is pushing out a message and receiving a message and also and listening. So I think that that's the biggest thing is like it allows you just to be in tune and kind of get in their heads and hearts and thoughts about what's really going on. What do you think, Kev? I mean, I, I agree with everything you said. I would also add the point that it's probably the one avenue where you can actually get sentiment in real time, whereas opposed if we were, you know, going to a focus group or, you know, a survey, you're already weeks behind where those, you know, that interaction happened. Kevin, I totally agree with you. I think that with social media being able to actively listen in real time, it really is going to get you, you know, the genuine interaction that you want. I mean, you're, you're able to reach people like in the here and now, instead of the waiting game, it's like right here, right now, this is what's going on. And this is, you know, how we're doing things. Absolutely. So perfect. I think that, you know, this is a great episode. And I think that, you know, problem solving, if you could solve a client's problem, they're going to work with you. They're, they're You're hireable. And you know, that's the way things work. So, I thank thank everybody for being there. Kevin, thank you for your time. Thank you, Thanks Greg. for being here. Tammy, thank you for you being Thanks so much for having me on. So Kev, anything planned this week? What do we got going on? Anything? Just work. How the dog? How's Penny and Parker? How's Penny oh, and Parker? Penny, Penny and Parker, dude, they're Penny. raising hell downstairs, barking at somebody <laughs> walking by the house. So any, anyone who doesn't know Trinity Web Media, Penny and Parker are Kevin's dogs. They're like uh they're like my my niece and nephew, <laughs> I guess, right? Oh. Aside from my real nephew, yeah. I don't want to fucking say that and get shit from my sister, right? <clears throat> but so it was nice to have Penny and Parker on the show and have them have their own little their own little segment. Yep. <laughs> Howling dogs. Hey, so thanks everybody for listening. We really we really appreciate you being here. Uh, without you, again, you know this podcast falls on a, on deaf ears. So we appreciate you. And if you like the show, tell a friend, and you can subscribe to the show on iTunes. Stitcher, Pod, um, Podbean, uh, Google Play, or SoundCloud. So thanks for listening. And until next week, this is the new marketing show by Trinity Web Media.